much. Uh, I, I, Madam Speaker, Chairperson of the NCOC, it's a privilege being in your company again and uh, having the good fortune to sit uh, in this chair. And let me say publicly uh, to all uh, that have now listened to, to Nat Maharaj, this is not the first time that he has ambushed me. <laughs> so it doesn't come as a surprise. Let me refresh your memory. There was an occasion when uh, Kodesa was uh, entertaining a visit by, uh, by Mr. Eugene Ter Blanche, unannounced. <laughs> and on that occasion, they it, it was of paramount importance to do two things. First of all, to demonstrate to the world that we will not be derailed from our objective to find a inclusive negotiated agreement. Getting the wheels back on track, fixing uh, the walls that had been broken, uh, Rolf and Cyril were occupied. This is now Rolf Mayer and Cyril Ramaphosa. And they said, outside uh, this building uh, was a delegation. And they were making <coughs> representations regarding to land. And, and, and it was agreed that Rolf and Cyril were too occupied, but they needed representatives to demonstrate to this delegation that negotiations will continue regardless of this interruption. So they asked Mac and me to, to face this delegation. I didn't hear the interjection, but I do, do remember, I do remember. Come again? No, I have to involve you because I remember how you ambushed me. <laughs> we were standing there in the glare of publicity showing to the world we are ready to negotiate. And what did Mac do? He, he raised his fist and his right hand and he said, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> and there I was standing representing F.W. de Klerk and Rolf Mayer and, and I knew I had to do something otherwise Mac was going to blow me out of the water <laughs> and this delegation was not even going to listen to me. <laughs> I raised my left fist and I said, Viva negotiations, viva! <laughs> Long and behold, after this, Max said, you know, I'm available to give you special lessons. <laughs> and shouting, Amanda, I said, no, Max, now that's not how you go about the business. You must remember, if I had raised my right hand there and said, Amanda, I would have been blown out of the water. F.W. de Clerc would have dismissed me there and then. <laughs> and the left arm comes from the heart. And that is what negotiation is all about. <laughs> long and behold, long and behold, those who had observed this on television wrote a letter to Mr. De Klerk and they said, that Leon Vessels, that guy cannot be trusted. First of all, he had, he had apologized for apartheid. And now secondly, there he's making common, common ground with Matt Maharaj and raising his fist in the air. Now that is the heart of the matter. <laughs> the heart of the matter was that there was a critical moment in the negotiating process when we realized that we cannot negotiate be on behalf of white Afrikaner right wingers. We could only create space for them to present their own case. And that is when that particular uh, final accord, how that came about. Let me just say in, in, in conclusion, I, I have to tell you that when I watched this, this uh, video earlier on and I listened to my own words and on the clock I had said my, my notes demanded that I close the proceedings at 12 and you would remember they showed it was 12 o'clock. After two years of hard work, we were a little bit lackadaisical here towards the end. We, the record will reflect I adjourned the proceedings at eight minutes past 12. After two years of work, never in my life had I witnessed such 
commitment again as I had witnessed then. And today I want to applaud those behind the scenes who prepared the paperwork, who prepared draft after draft after draft. Uh, a remarkable group of people, and I am so happy that I was a part of it. 